The ID TT has been a favourite among sports car enthusiasts ever since the original made its debut more than a decade ago. Part of the reason for that popularity was the fact that the production car was so close to the concept that was shown for the first time in Frankfurt in 1995. It brought mainstream thoroughbred sports car motoring to a broader audience for the first time. No wonder the original TT was a hard act to follow, and it's true that the second generation TT, which made its world debut in 2006, lacks some of the design originality of its predecessor. That said, it's a larger, sleeker and more sophisticated car, and like the first generation TT, it's offered in both coupe and roadster versions. Four years on and the second generation TT has undergone a mild facelift. The changes also include a slightly culled lineup. You still get the choice between a Roadster or a Coupe, you still get the choice of manual or S-Tronic, and you now have Quattro as an option. But your only engine choice is a 2.0-litre TFSI. You need to look closely at the TTs to recognize the subtle exterior changes, most of which have been sourced from the S-Line parts bin. A subtle body kit adds a polished black radiator grill, a deeper front bumper with bigger air intakes, extended sills and a rear apron with an integrated diffuser to both the TT Coupe and Roadster models. Also new are the headlights with integrated daytime running lights and redesigned 17-inch wheels. I'll tell you something, if I was a TT customer who'd bought a car recently and opted for the S-Line package, I'd be a little bit lashed because all those bits are now standard. Exactly, and that's really what the difference is all about. Front and rear just get a little bit of a tweak, new bumpers, diffuser, but is it enough to freshen up this car? I think so, it doesn't really, it's not too dramatic, it doesn't take away from what the TT is all about. I think it adds just a nice little bit of an edge to it. You think they could have done more? You can always do more, but the thing is, do you want to? I think it's just enough. On the other hand, of course, still very much essentially a TT, and it's a car you immediately recognize. Both these cars, and the entire TT range for that matter, use the same 2-litre TFSI engine. In its most recent iteration, the four-cylinder turbo unit employs direct injection and Audi's valve lift system to combine more power with reduced fuel consumption and lower emissions. As a result, maximum power comes to 155 kilowatts, available between 4,300 and 6,000 RPM. The torque peak is 350 newton meters, available in a band between 1,600 and 4,200 RPM. Audi also claims that fuel efficiency has improved by 14%. That means a combined cycle fuel consumption figure of 7.1 litres per 100 and a CO2 count of 164 grams per kilometre. Now those figures are for the S-Tronic equipped coupe, but the Quattro Roadster, with the same gearbox, has figures of 7.4 litres per 100 and 172 grams per kilometre. At face value, the cabins of the TT Coupe and Roadster have remained virtually unchanged. It's still a snug and well-packaged cockpit, with ample space for two and particular focus on efficient ergonomics. Besides, the TT cockpit sets the tone for the rest of the Audi range as far as the quality of fit and finish is concerned, and that's still the case. These updated versions also get some extras including Bluetooth phone prep, leather upholstery with head protection, multifunction steering wheel, and shift paddles for the S-Tronic versions. The interior is an Audi interior, it's well finished, the materials are great, but between the roads and the coupe there is that sort of space and practicality issue. Well, I think if you're buying a roads to practicality doesn't really come into it. Clearly the coupe has got more space, it's got those rear seats which you can fold down, makes for a bigger luggage compartment. So sure, if practicality does become an issue, coupe is what you're going to go. The two examples on test here offer a direct comparison between standard front-wheel drive and optional and dearer Quattro all-wheel drive. The Roadster test car was fitted with Quattro, which certainly ups the traction and composure levels, but the front-wheel drive coupe always felt the nimbler, wieldier car. Both cars feature independent front suspension, an all-disc braking system with ABS, EBD and EBA, and ESP stability control, which can be partially switched off. If you're the kind of person who likes to rely on figures to prove how good your car is, well then, 
we've got a bit of a tough choice because this car has a higher top speed, but the Roadster with its Quattro has a quicker look to 100 time. But don't think that Quattro is the be all and end all because this front wheel drive car somehow has sharper throttle responses and it does feel a little bit more together. I think that has something to do with the fixed roof. It's true to say that the hardtop coupe will have better torsional rigidity, which in turn benefits chassis response and outright handling ability. But then the coupe could be accused of lacking at least some of the appeal associated with wind in the hair driving. The best way to enjoy this roadster is obviously with a top down but the weather isn't allowing us to do that and I suppose it does take away some of the magic of this car. Having said that, it's pretty competent as it stands, not as much scuttle shake as you'd expect, pretty wieldy handling and plenty of power. In fact, of all the TTs this is the fastest one, of course except for the TTRS, 0 to 100 time 5.8 seconds, top speed. 240 kilometers now. Yes, that's slower than the coupe. Obviously, this car not quite as streamlined, and the quattro all wheel drive system also means that there's more drivetrain drag. Generally, though, a very competent, very enjoyable sports car. In essence, these latest updated Audi TTs remain faithful to their core values. These are neither hard edged speed machines nor exclusive exotics, but they do offer an attractive mix of swift performance, wieldy road manners, a comfortably appointed interior, and a shape that still attracts a lot of attention. For many, the dilemma won't be one of choosing the Audi ahead of its rivals, but whether to opt for the hardtop or the ragtop. For the Green Brigade, one of the most impressive aspects is the reduction in fuel consumption and exhaust emissions, which has been achieved without compromising dynamic talent. I don't normally like roadsters. I think they're noisy, I think the handling is compromised, and in fact you end up spending more money for less car. But having said that, the TT Roadster seems to work for me. It uh, somehow gels, I think maybe because of the Quattro four-wheel drive system, because it just has enough power, and because it actually looks quite good, I've enjoyed driving this car much more than I thought. And strangely, I'm normally the fan of the drop tops, but uh, for me, the coupe just feels a little bit more together. And despite the fact that it doesn't have Quattro, it just seems to respond a bit better. I mean, what you lose in grip, you make up with a bit more kind of involvement in the drive. And I've always thought the front-wheel drive TTs were the more fun option. Whether it's the coupe that captures your heart or the ragtop that has you reaching for your wallet, there's one element that Dion and I agree on. These updated models could well be Audi's most enjoyable TTs to date. The Audi TT remains a desirable sports car in either coupe or roadster form, and the latest improvements make a good package even better. The 2.0-litre engine remains one of the world's best. Personal choice and preference carry more weight here than any rational decision. Both cars are sleek, attractive and well equipped. A lack of exclusivity is perhaps the only negative.